Today's topic is important as well as interesting too because today I'm going to talk about something which is practiced in pretty much all software development organizations. Yes, today I'm going to talk about code reviews. But hold on, I'm not going to talk about how you should do code reviews or what are the best practices of code reviews. I'm going to talk about, you know, maybe controversial that the current code review practices are not sufficient and we need to move to something else. And the name of something else is test driven code reviews. So I'm going to take you to one of the medium articles which I have written on the same topic. I will talk in reference to that. I'll paste the link to the article in the description section. So let's go ahead and understand what are code reviews and why I am proposing test driven code reviews. Okay, so let's talk about the purpose of code review. We all know that a code review is a formal process via which you know the reviewers ascertain that the code confirms to the quality and other considerations of a particular software development organization. So it basically means that the code is correct and it does what it intends to do. But does this really happen? You know, I can bet on this that most of the people will say that it doesn't. And being working in this software industry for more than 23 odd years, I can tell you frankly that the intentions are all okay, but reality is completely different. To understand that particular reality, let's try to understand how the code reviews happens. So there are generally two ways of doing code reviews, offline and online. Now the idea behind offline and online reviews were different before COVID. Online doesn't necessarily mean, you know, doing it virtually or over a WebEx or, you know, any other tool. The online idea was to make sure that you know the code creator as well as the code reviewer sits together and they will walk through the code. That was one technique and the other technique was called as offline review where you know you can check in your code and you can see the you know branch link uh, along with the diff to the person who is going to review your code. And I'm sure that you must have experienced both of these scenarios. Now there is a bigger problem with this particular approach. I'm not sure whether you are able to see this problem or not. Let me talk about it. So why I'm asking this question, something which is in practice for years, some things work perfectly. Why am I even questioning that? I know these kind of questions comes with lots of risk, but maybe someone has to take. So what happens with code reviews is summed up over here. In most of the cases, people are not banking on code reviews as a practice to make sure that the code is correct and it conforms to the quality requirement of the software. Most of the review comments are purely cosmetic in nature. Something like, you know, the name of the function is not intuitive or the name of the variable is not intuitive. You are having too many if conditions uh, which can increase the cyclometric complexity and something like that. Something which has no impact in terms of your code being compiled into a machine code. I know you might end up writing a if condition and inside that three, four, five if conditions. And this is not a good practice in terms of someone else understanding your code or you yourself understanding your code. We have to make this distinction. Okay. So it's all about how you understand your code. But when your code is compiled to a machine language, it doesn't make a difference whether you have written one if with lots of and or or condition or you have written one top level if condition and inside that you have written 10, 20 if condition or you have written a switch case statement or something like that. It doesn't make any difference in the way your code is executed in the machine or being compiled in a machine code. It's all about how humans, sorry, how easy it is for humans to understand the same. Okay, so those comments, I'm calling it as cosmetic comments, which is not making any change in your software as far as its functionality is concerned, as far as its non-functional behavior is concerned. And the intention of code review was not that, okay? So you might be thinking that, okay, I am making a troubling observation, even though you agree to this. Yeah, it's a troubling observation. Let me explain that. You know, code reviews are more of a subjective thing than objective thing. 
and it is mostly based on this personal opinions and perceptions based on the person doing the code review based on their own understanding their knowledge and their inclination towards a particular feature or design or maybe aversion to it i have been to these code reviews where somebody who is doing the code review and i am creating something in a design not approved by the person of course based on the majority decision you know we went through another design idea but as a human you know there will be something like you know i didn't like that design i don't know what they are trying to do i'll just give some cosmetic comment and just get away with it or i'll make sure that i will show them why this design was not good as a human being these thought processes are not incorrect let's not try to you know convert humans into something else we are human and we will get these kind of thought processes it's but natural and considering the natural aspect of things we need to work towards overcoming these kind of natural biases that may come when we are doing the code reviews now there is one more thing when the software developers write the code they have to understand a lot more thing as compared to the person who is reviewing the code okay the person who is reviewing the code might be an expert but considering the problem domain a software developer or a set of software developers who are working on a particular problem they will be more acquainted about the problem okay now what organizations do is that they say that code review is a checklist and i can bet on this that code reviews are just treated as a checklist item people will just see whether this checklist item is ticked or not they have no problem with how many comments are given whether comments are given or not whether code reviews were meaningful or not it's a checklist a checklist has to be there but the problem with this kind of checklist is that somebody has to approve this checklist which means somebody need to physically say yes i am okay with this particular code without maybe much of the responsibility if something goes wrong okay so this kind of you know checklist driven development create multiple set of emperors within a company and when we have emperors um they will as a human being they will think from their own perspective and their own perspective will weigh on top of all other perspective okay so these kind of situations are actually detrimental to creativity of individual software developers now i have talked a lot about you know what is the current code review process and why i think it's not good enough for correctness and quality of the code here is what i am suggesting i am suggesting a new technique called tdcr which is test driven code reviews test driven code reviews and this is going to make sure that whatever we have thought of in terms of code reviews it will help you to achieve all of these whatever you are seeing on your screen right now so the question is what are test driven code reviews test driven code reviews is a very simple technique and a perfect antidote for whatever problem i discussed just now the practice is apart from all cosmetic comments like you know variables or function names all functional and non functional comments if it is coming it has to be verified by a unit test cases before some changes can be applied to the code now here is what i am trying to say if i am having a set of function and if i am getting a code reviews that okay under this situation these functions will fail i am not going to go ahead and trust that blindly and go ahead and change the code even though that particular observation might be correct and maybe it is correct okay what i will have to do is that i'll have to make sure that there is a unit test case representing that particular scenarios i know i need to write mocks fakes doubles or stubs uh, for making sure that this particular scenario comes i will do that and i will verify that comment and then i am going to change the code so this changes the subjective part of code reviews to an objective part which means that if somebody is thinking that this particular code will not work in this particular scenario 
you need to come up with a test case to validate that. The test cases can be written by the software developers who has written the code or preferably can also be, you know, written by the people who are reviewing the code. This will bring in much needed, much needed discipline in the code reviews as well as both the developers as well as the reviewer will be able to understand what problem we are trying to solve. And the best thing about this particular unit test scheme is that you have some assumptions, you verify those assumptions before making sure that things are changing. Okay. And in that sense, even the software developers can write the unit test cases to show that no, your assumption is wrong. And this will not only increase the discipline, this will also help in increasing the quality of the software quality of the product. So this is the idea behind test driven code reviews. I do hope and believe that this will help you immensely in your code review process. Thank you all. Thanks for watching. See you again.